I'm very excited to have my next guest join us. They are making their U.S. debut on a tour right now, and right here on B-Sides, Jasmine B. Hello. Hey. <laughs> how's it going? No one saw that. Yeah. Please. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm nervous. To be on here in. In, in my first, every time that it's like the first show. Yeah. Again, I always feel super nervous. It always goes so quickly. You think it's gonna. You look at the set list and you're like, oh, that's gonna feel like a lifetime on stage. It goes so quickly. It goes so quick. But you know, all the hard work is over. You just have to go really? out there and do your thing. That's all the, the nervousness. Part. Well, I actually had really bad stage fright so long before I started p p properly performing. So I feel like it hasn't fully gone away. After the first few shows, you're like, oh, I've got this. Like, let's just say like, round two, round three. But it was always the first show. Like, whenever we've begun, like UK, Europe, like that first show, I've always feel like super nervous. I'm sure in the UK and Europe, you probably have more relatives and extended family that may come to a show. Actually, not Europe. Maybe just London, maybe. Mm. Honestly, I cannot remember too much family coming to London. I have, a lot, I have a lot of family in California, some family in New York. How, how is that so? <laughs> um, well, all of my mom's relatives, they all migrated from the Philippines to different parts of the US, which I don't know how, because I don't know how they have visas because no one is American. Um, but yeah, they just all migrated all over the place. And then there's like one relative that's here. So they've kind of spread out all over the US. I don't know who is coming to what show, but I only really have like immediate relatives like in the UK, but that's more from like my dad's side or like my mom's like brothers and sisters, like very immediate. Mm. But I have loads of like relatives of all different relations, like across different parts of the US. So I don't really know who I'm going to see, but I do find it super nerve wracking because it just feels like, oh, you're not supposed to see this. Like, <laughs> you know me since I was like a little kid. But they also haven't seen you in some time. So they yeah. probably remember you as a four year old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now a lot sudden, has changed since right. then. Were you that person growing up as uh, someone to, aspiring to make music, to sing into a hairbrush and look into a mirror? Or yeah. were you more along the lines of just... I wanted to do film, um, but it got boring. I had too much ideas for the line of work that I would have pursued in film. I like studied film in like high school. I really wanted to do it, but it kind of was explained to me like you you'll be lucky if like people want to hear your ideas like you know it's years and years and years of interning to even maybe just get like a spot with like a voice and i just had much too much ideas to kind of do that um and so i just thought music i can make cool like mini films i can look the way i want to look it was basically everything that i enjoyed at the time but in a way that i could just do it there and then so i made what do i torture my last year of High school, which high school finishes at 16 in the UK, and then you do like college, which I know in the US, US is more high school until you're 18. And so you do college till you're 18. And then when you're like 19, 20, you go to university. And so I quit school at 16 and I released Worldwide Torture like undercover in my last year of high school, just hoping no one would like notice or like research me. Um, and so I made that as soon as kind of I realized that I wasn't going to do film and then just jumped into it. And I guess it paid off, I think. Yeah, it really paid off. You obviously are merging a lot of your creative talents t together. And I'm so in awe of you because Thank of the you. fact, because you, you, you had parents that were in the music industry, right? They were musicians, performers, artists themselves. And I can imagine how easy it is to just slip into that. But in a way, you, you kind of rebel by going I didn't want to do it because right? I, my older brother wanted to do that. And I was just like, I don't want to be like any of them. I'm going to do my own thing and not going to be like in the musical family. But it obviously it was just like, yeah, <laughs> crept in <laughs> some way. Um, it's in, it's in your DNA. You can't avoid it. Yeah. What was that turning point? I just wanted to do get my ideas out, but I just couldn't do that with something as big as film. You need to earn a lot of respect. It's not something that unless you come from a wealthy family or you have high connections or you went to a really, really good film school, it's not something you can really just get up and do. Maybe a short film. You can't get up and just make a film because you want to, but I can very much make a music video on my phone or 
with the help of a friend if I would like to. Um, or I can make a song on my laptop. You know, that's something that's very much more accessible. It doesn't necessarily have to be extremely high budget, but I feel like earning your name in the film world, you either need to have like, you need to have already made it in some way, whether that's financially, whether that's through education, some praise from higher ups, but I feel like you don't need that for music. No. Right. So right. I just went into whatever was going to be the easiest and the cheapest because I needed to like express myself. What were your expectations releasing that EP? Because Nothing. obviously it resonated. Nothing. Yeah. I was just like, this is fun. Yeah. Uh, and and you mentioned that it, you wanted to just put it out there on the you put out music on the DL with no expectation. But how can that be? You know, someone's going to pick up on it and do a little homework. Well, I had a little bit, a small following for doing this crazy makeup, being extreme, way too extreme for a minor online um, and garnered up. I don't know the right audience, but a audience. And so I knew that someone would see it. I just didn't expect it to really become a thing. Um, but yeah, we just took the money. I like sold a bunch of my clothes because the worldwide torture music video is only like 500 pounds which like to anyone would seem like oh, 500 is 500 that's a lot but if you know what working in the music video industry is you know that 500 is like Nothing. not a lot for a music video so i just sold a bunch of my clothes i made it i would sell like t-shirts and then i just filmed it in like i think my mom's ex-boyfriend's house um the person filmed it for free and then we invested all the money we earned from that into saccharine and then so on and so on mm. and so i after that after saccharine came out like i i felt very co confident to like bite the bullet and invest because saccharine it now has like i think 64 million views something ridiculous i think we made that with like 2k once again the person did a free just pulling favors i was very good at pulling favors I like made the EP for free because I would just tell people like I can't pay you now but like I promise you this will do well and like I'll pay you at some point um, and so mm. I mean it worked. Monster Truck is, is one of my favorite songs really? from that EP is just fantastic. I'd love to do that song live it's just the other person that sings a lot of the song is not is not like Australia and I, I just don't feel I don't scream like that yeah, I can't yeah. do what she does. Yeah gosh. I'm really excited for the new stuff. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to perform the new stuff. Well, you you obviously have been hinting at it. You've released a few songs, right? Yeah, we're doing all of the ones we've released now. I'm doing one unreleased one, but it's just a very different album to what I've done before. And that's always going to come with some backlash. Like I remember when I stopped doing the nose, the internet was like, "What's happened to you? Like you've sold out. Like you sold yourself to the devil." It's like I just stopped putting eyeliner on my nose. Like, <laughs> yeah, um. So there's always going to be pushback when you start a new era, but I am personally really excited for it. What gave you the confidence to go in this direction? Because you only had released an EP. It could have been, quote unquote, very easy to capitalize on that set. I know. I just didn't feel it anymore. Yeah. I had a whole other album that I made and I went to rehab and then I got out and I was like, ooh, that album is not good. I think I was just on like loads of drugs. I don't think it was actually good. I think I was just like, off my face all the time. I feel like if you're on enough drugs, anything will sound good. Uh, so I scrapped that whole album that consisted of like 15, 16, I think like 17 songs and just made the one that I'm about to release in quite a short amount of time. Mm. And I just felt like I was filled with so much inspiration. I'm really happy with it. But yeah, I have like upwards of like 200 songs that I just like never released from that era. Um, mm. And people are always begging me to make something out of them, but it feels so just not where I'm at anymore right. and I love worldwide torture and I love what it's done for me but I just don't feel mentally I think there's a very big difference between being 15 and being 20 I think being 30 to 35 maybe doesn't feel too crazy but being a teenager to not want anymore is a very weird experience that feels more like 15 years rather than 5 so I just don't feel like that anymore but I'm very happy to perform it and kind of perform it in the way that I do now I mean, kind of the character that I embody now, but I don't really wish to make music like that again. And everyone's like, I miss your old stuff, but it's still on iTunes. It's still there. You can still listen, still watch the videos. I'm not going to delete it. Um, if you miss it, it's so there. Yeah. It'll always be there for you. What, what were the experiences that sparked the creativity for 200 songs? And I assume that therapy, and uh, you talk about rehab, right? Help, <laughs> therapy is definitely a big help. Help guide you in a different direction. I think just feeling like I didn't have to metaphor too much anymore. Like, 
I don't know. I felt like worldwide torture. I wasn't fully able to speak about the issues that I wanted to speak about. It would have to be kind of metaphored or like characterized, like talking about maybe like Princess Castle as about disregarding someone, but it's talking about something kind of completely different. Everything that I wanted to talk about had to be like a metaphor or something like in another world. Whereas I feel like this album, I'm more able to freely talk about what I want to talk about and kind of just say it how it is. Um, it's just a different way of writing for me, but I really enjoy it. And I feel like sonically, it's the best. I feel like it's the best my work's ever been. But for this, as far as the 200 songs go, it was just doing like session and sessions, just keep on making. But the uh, the songs from the scrapped album do feel quite far from me now, so I don't wish to do anything. But it does feel like a waste that there are like 200 songs out there that no one's going to hear. Well, I, like I mentioned, it's kind of cathartic in a way because you're able to get these feelings off your chest and be done with it in some regards and those can it's live true, and if they true. are you know something that you can release then all the better it's true um i definitely feel like this very very therapeutic um and honestly it feels almost as like freeing as like actually just getting therapy which i do go to therapy but i i would say that that this new album really helped me close boxes on things i was feeling i was very mad about like everything World War Torch was a very angry album because I was so mad about the things I was going through. I was so upset, but I felt like I let go of it more in this album and kind of put all the issues I was having or people that were harming me in my life to rest through this album. And it's less of a kind of you. <laughs> like I feel right. like World War Torture is just like this little kid just being like... <laughs> right. You're in this new era. You're 20 you kind of close boxes on various parts yeah. and chapters of your life. Terrified is one of the singles that came out. What inspired that? It's actually my only happy song on this album. I have one other happy song, but it's still, I played it with someone, they were like, it's really dark. So I don't know, to me it's a happy song. Um, Terrified is my only happy song that was about being in like a good relationship or being my first relationship that didn't feel like unsafe. Um, and so that is really the only like truly happy the whole way through song. Um, but I love it. I love the little stars mm. in the video. We actually made star plushies, but we didn't get them on time for the tour. Uh, and and do you would can you say that a lot of the works on this album start happy or or, or I don't know? You tell me. Are are you guiding us through uh, a journey of of coming to that point of happiness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very much that. Um, I'm like closing the box on a lot of things, moving forward. But I asked like Twitter or X, whatever its name is now, um, like what makes a sad song in your opinion? And everyone was like, oh, um, the, we're naming snippets that I posted, like this one is sad, but I don't think that necessarily sad context makes a sad song. I feel like a lot of the songs in my opinion are happy, even if the meaning is a little bit or well, the lyrics aren't super, super happy. I feel like it's all optimistic. Even when, to I don't think talking about something sad makes it a sad song. I feel like there's a lot of optimism in the new songs, um, but I don't think there's any sad, sad, sad mm -hmm. songs on the album. Not sonically, at least. And what a great introduction to the world because you have been on this journey as a teenager and now you're 20, closing the chapter and I'm a grown up now in a way. Yeah. In a way, Do you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like I'll get to twenty five and be like, oh, you're not grown up, and yeah. I'll feel the same way about me at twenty five or thirty. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I have learned a lot, um, personally, industry wise and stuff. So I would say I feel grown up right now. Mm. Maybe I won't. I'll look back and be like, oh, you were just getting started. Great to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I'm uh, excited to see this. I'm nervous. Uh, no, don't be nervous. Sometimes I've been trying to smile. Sometimes I don't have facial. Shorts. You don't need to smile if you need. If you want to be serious, you can be. No, serious. it's good to. It's good for me to smile because sometimes I don't. I realize, sometimes I don't have facial expressions in my face just naturally, and then I look back on the video and I'm like, oh, I look so bad. <laughs> you did fantastic. Great to meet you. Thanks so much. It's nice to meet you. It is I Jasmine like Bean right here on B sides. Mm -hmm.